Grease Space, welcome back. We are on our third week of climbing up the mountain. We are rising up together. That's what we're doing. Wow. Yeah. Hence Today, the name Rise Up. Yeah, because you rise up a mountain, right? We're back here with senior and junior today. We have made a base camp, so we decided to build a fire. Yes. And we will get to it soon. It's very, it's not lit yet, but we'll lit it up. Lit it up. We'll lit it up. That's what we're going to do. Or light it up. That as well. <laughs> we have an activity. Yeah. Go get your sweatsuits on. If you work out in a sweatsuit. Today, gonna Pastor Shay is going to work out for us. I'm going to sweat. Yeah. We're, yeah. Do you guys know what a mountain climber is? I mean, like, obviously it's someone who climbs a mountain. But the workouter. But there's a workout. Climber. And I think I have to be on the ground for this. Though. Yeah. But basically, okay, I looked this up because I don't work out. <laughs> I go for walks and stuff, but like you're on the ground and you have to do this. Yeah, you're and in like then, a push-up form yeah. and then you lift your knee towards your elbow. Um, Austin can't do it because he got into a serious injury with a mountain goat on the way up. Yeah. So he cannot lift his... Okay. It rammed its horns right into the side of my leg. Yeah, so now he can't do this. Okay, we're going to see if you can do more than I can do. I believe you can. Yeah. I'm probably going to do like three and call it a day. I'll okay. count them out. Ready? Oh, you're doing it with a backpack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're climbing a mountain. Okay. Here we go. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. Oh, this is a workout. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's it. Ten. A solid 10. Solid 10. You're probably still going and you're like, Pastor Shay, weak. Yes. <laughs> Correct. You are not wrong. All right. I have a question for you. Yes. About these mountain climbers. When you were getting tired, did it help? Would it have helped if you had a team cheering you on? 100%. Yeah. I would have probably kept going if I heard you guys going. Ah! Probably to 100. No, no. Oh. Okay. Not to 100. <laughs> Maybe you guys have done a hundred, and we're we're cheering you on. Woo! Go! Okay. Sometimes it can be really difficult to encourage someone, and it gets much easier when we know how to encourage them. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about Jesus encouraging people. And what we talk about our story in the Bible. Woo! We're going to light this fire up and have a little campfire. Here we go. You got the. Uh, I didn't bring any marshmallows though. Oh, Ooh. There we go. Do you hear the crackling of the fire? <laughs> it's real crackling. <laughs> we built our own fire. All right. Today's story is coming at you from John 21, 1 to 17. 1 to 17. All right. Does any. Are we reading in the Bible? Um, no, we're actually just going to paraphrase it. We're just going to make it fast and quick. All right. Yeah. All right. Does anyone know what Peter did right before Jesus was put on the cross? Okay. Maybe you know. It's, it's a little well known. Peter denied he was a follower of Jesus three different times. Not once, not twice, three different times. He was probably afraid that he might be captured like Jesus was. So he told people he had no idea who Jesus is. Hmm. So Jesus had told Peter that this would happen. Even though Peter said he would never turn his back on Jesus, he did. Just as Jesus predicted, Peter's heart was broken. He was so heartbroken. He was so excited that Jesus had risen from the dead, but he had, hadn't gotten the chance to talk to Jesus about what had happened yet. Have you ever done something wrong, like disobey your parents maybe? And maybe they knew about it, and you knew you'd be in trouble, but you haven't talked to them about it yet. Yeah, there's or a lot. Or they haven't talked to you about it. Yeah, you probably have a lot of fear. You don't want to, like, disappoint them. One day, the disciples were out fishing. I like to fish. I don't know if you like to fish. I don't like to touch uh, them. Yeah. Well, they were out fishing. <laughs> they were doing their thing. A lot of time had passed, but they weren't catching anything whatsoever. Nothing. Nothing seemed to be going right. Then, someone appeared. Someone appeared and told them to cast the net on the other side of the boat. The net filled up with a bunch of fish. Bunch of fish. 
the disciples realized that it was Jesus on the shore. What? And Peter was so excited. Peter jumped out of the boat and swam to the shore to see Jesus. And when Peter got to the shore, Jesus invited Peter to sit and eat. The other disciples followed after. They brought the boat to shore. Jesus simply asked Peter if he loved Jesus. Of course Peter did. Jesus gave Peter a mission to take care of Jesus' followers everywhere. Man. It didn't matter what Peter had done. Jesus wanted Peter to know that he was forgiven and chosen to do something special for God. So he encouraged Peter, even though you have done something that wasn't great, I, you're still loved and you still have an amazing purpose. Mm -hmm. So good. So good. Well, we have our big idea for this week. Another cloud to go um, up the mountain. Another cloud in the mountain. And this the week, mountain sphere. it is... Jesus, Jesus gives encouragement. encouragement. <laughs> That's the word. All right. Beautiful. Right there. That's a great cloud. So we're actually going to read some more scripture. Is the, is the cloud falling? The sky is falling. The sky is falling. We'll see how long it stays. Um, we're going to read some scripture, too. Um, there is Psalms 4, 1 to 2. So if you want to flip with us to your... Bibles. An easy way to find Psalm, just open it right in the middle. Yeah. You'll most likely hit it. It's, I think Psalm is one that has the most books in the Bible, right? Yes. That's pretty cool. We lost our cloud. Oh, it's okay. We'll we'll staple it up later. A It'll gust of wind tomorrow. blew it away. Yeah. I have really like little fingers that don't want to. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay, here we go. So we have a question for you. Can you imagine what would have happened to Peter oh. if God didn't show mercy? Ooh. I'm going to read the scripture now because I think I have to read it first. <laughs> okay, so Psalms 4, 1 to 2 says, Answer me when I call to you, O God, who declares me innocent. Free me from my troubles. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will, will you people ruin my reputation? How long... Will you make groundless accusations? How long will you continue your lies? Ooh. So the question once more, can you imagine what would have happened to Peter if God didn't show mercy? Be really guilty, he'd feel really guilty. Mm -hmm. God is a good God so. and shows us mercy. Jesus encouraged Peter and told Peter there was a plan for his life even though Peter had done something disappointing. Jesus used this moment as a time to encourage Peter with his words and actions. So a question for you guys is, who do you need to show mercy and encouragement to today or throughout this week? Yeah. Maybe it's some friends at school who are bugging you or annoying you, or maybe your siblings. Yeah. Yeah. Lockdown and stuff can be hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mercy, it's having forgiveness being like being kind and forgiving that is the mercy of god mm -hmm. it's the mercy we can show to others um it's back to our favorite segment we're going into uh an interview time questions with austin and if you don't know i'm austin today we have a special guest pastor shay give it up hello i'm new here all right question number one what did peter do that made him discouraged he denied Jesus. He denied Jesus. He denied. Cancel culture. <laughs> Number two. How many fish did the disciples catch before Jesus showed up? Do you remember? It was 18. 18. It was none. They caught none. none. 18 he, he minus me. 18. Zero. 18 minus 18. Number three. What did Jesus ask Peter when he made it back to shore and talked with him? What do you remember? Because Pastor Shane has a very small memory. He asked, Peter, do you love me? Oh, yeah. Do you love Jesus? And Peter said, Of yes. course I do. Of course I do. Wow. All right. And now this question is going out to all our listeners. What can you do to encourage someone who is feeling down? What, what can you do? What can you do? What can you do? Well, there's some ways you could maybe bring them food. Everyone loves food. I just want to let you know yeah. this. 
Like if someone is like not feeling good and you're like, I feel like baking them cookies, do it. Stat of the day, 99% of people's love language is food. Not 99, that is true. <laughs> we got that from our own sources. Yeah. We interviewed two people. Yeah, one, two. One, two. Uh, we, kind words, everyone has different love languages. So yeah. like things that fill up their cup. So yeah. kind words, maybe even like, if you notice your mom's having a hard day or dad or aunt, uncle, grandparent, someone who you love and you notice they're having a hard day, doing something without them asking you, that's a big thing. Like mm -hmm. parents love that and it encourages them and sees that you care for them. Yeah, yeah. I could go on all day about it. All day, but we won't because we have a time limit. We got more stuff. The show will cut us off. Yeah. But that's all we got for questions with Austin and we're gonna move into our Memory verse. Put tape on the Bible. I hope that's okay. I didn't learn this in Bible college. <laughs> if you guys don't remember, our memory verse is Romans 10, verse 9. Here we go. Nope. All right. All right. Do you want to do the actions? Oh, I don't know if I remember them. I think I do. Okay. I believe If not, you. I'll make them up on the spot. Yeah, it'll be fun. You can, okay. maybe you guys can do them faster than Austin. Probably. Who knows? Okay, ready? Yeah. Romans 10, 9. If you can, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Let's do it again. Saved. What's saved? Saved. I, I, I don't know. I did the cross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready? Yeah. Whew, you got this. You know this. We're going to warm it up. Whew, whew, whew. Up on your feet. Let's go. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Wow. That's amazing. Like Jesus, God has given us this gift of Jesus's life that mm -hmm. we can accept, that we can, yes. but we can, we don't have to do anything. Like we, we are so excited and we love God so much that we want to show him how much we appreciate this gift that we follow what he asks us to do. But God has freely given us this gift of love and salvation through Jesus. It is amazing. Amazing. Well. We go hang out with our friends. Oh, you're forgetting something very important, Austin. Do you guys remember? What do we do before we go hang out with our friends? Oh, we pray. We pray. All right, let's put our hands together because who are we focusing on? God, and we're gonna close our eyes because we wanna keep our focus on God. Let's do that. Dear God, thank you for encouraging us by showing us mercy. Lord God, thank you for love. Even when we don't feel like we deserve it, even when we do things that might be disappointing, you still love us. Help us to show each other mercy and we want to be encouraging and loving like you. Will you bless each person who is listening and watching, Lord? Will they feel your love and peace in their lives? And will you just uh, rid them of any guilt or shame that they have, Lord, and just bring your peace into their lives. In your holy, mighty name, amen. Amen. All right, friends, we will see you next week. And it will be our last week. Oh my goodness, that's really impressive. It'll be our last week of the mountain. I'm very distracted. <laughs> It'll be our last week of going up a mountain. So we will see you next week. Have a great blessed week and go hang out with Carl and Callie. Bye. Hey, old chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. And I'm Vanessa. Welcome to Grill TV. Welcome to Grill TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now once again, welcome to Grill TV. Carl. Psst, Carl, are you gonna start? What? Oh yeah, sure. Hey kids, uh, today we're gonna um, counter fingers. Counter fingers? Yeah. Don't you think we might wanna play a game? Okay, we can play a game. We can play, who can count their fingers as slow as? One. All right, Carl, that's it. Head up. I don't wanna. Come on, get up. Come on, get up. Did that hurt? No. Okay, yes. 
Come on, Carl. These kids want to know what's wrong. No, they don't. No one does. After what I did, no way. Wait, what did you do? Something horrible. Just awful. Listen, no matter what you did, you can always tell me. Come on, we're friends, Carl. I don't know. Do you promise you won't tell no one? I promise. Okay. Well, my good friend Andy invited me to go camping with him last week, and he really wanted me there. That sounds fun. Kind of like what we're doing now. It was going to be super fun, but when it came to the day, I decided to change my mind and not go. Why did you not want to go? I guess I just felt like staying home and playing video games. Oh, I get that. It's not a big deal. At least you told him you didn't feel like going. You did tell him you weren't going anymore. Oh, Carl. I told Andy I hate camping. But you love camping. I know. It's a terrible thing to do. I feel awful. No, he'll never forgive me. I also lied, and that's a sin. Now God is upset with me. Well, Carl, I think you'd be surprised. Surprised at how mad they are? Oh, great. No, no, well, just like Peter was surprised, I'm sure that you would be too. Peter? Peter, the teacher at the high school that smells like a pineapple? No, Peter in the Bible, the disciple. Oh yeah, what about him? Well, you remember last week's story, right? Sure, we talked about how Jesus overcame death. He died for our sins and then three days later he rose back up to life. Yep, but you do remember what happened before that story, right? I can't. Well, after Jesus was arrested, all the disciples scattered because they were scared of being arrested for being a follower of Jesus. One time, there were people coming up to Peter accusing him of knowing Jesus, but each time he was asked, he said he didn't know Jesus. What? He's lying. He knows Jesus. He was a disciple for crying out loud. He was Jesus' friend. I know. He lied three times and denied Jesus by doing it. He really did something really bad. Oh, I know what that feels like. So after Jesus had died, Peter returned to fishing. Oh, he went back to his old job. He must have been down in the dumps, huh? Probably. I mean, he spends years with Jesus and begins to truly depend on him. And bam! He ruins his relationship with his friend and his teacher by turning his back on him not once, not twice, but thrice! Yeah, it certainly had an effect on him. So while they were fishing, a man walked out on the shore and realized they were not catching anything. He called out to them and told them to cast their net on the other side of the boat. They listened and then bam! They caught so much fish that they couldn't even pull the net up. <laughs> that was a lucky day. Thank goodness that guy helped him out. That sounds exactly like something Jesus would do. Wait, you're telling me that was Jesus? Of course, it wasn't just some random guy, it was Jesus. What, he was raised from the dead then he decided to go help out the disciples? How awesome. Did they recognize him? They did. They were so happy to see him, but Peter was so ready to see him, he couldn't wait. He took off his cloak and jumped in the water and got to Jesus as fast as he could. But I bet Jesus wasn't as happy to see Peter after the whole, I don't know Jesus thing. That's what you think, but nope. Jesus sat down and talked with Peter, and it was a surprising talk. Surprising how? Well, after they got done eating, Jesus asked Peter a question three times. Jesus asked if Peter loved him, and three times Peter said yes. Then what did Jesus say? He told Peter to feed his sheep. I wasn't aware Jesus was an owner of sheep. When did he get into sheep farming? <laughs> no, Jesus meant for if Peter loved him, that he should take care of all of God's children and do what Jesus had taught him to do. Huh, that makes a whole lot more sense than Jesus owning livestock. But what doesn't make sense is how Jesus forgave Peter after all he did. No, it doesn't make sense, but that's what's amazing about Jesus. He does things that go against what we think is normal. His love and forgiveness goes beyond anything we could ever understand. That is awesome, and super refreshing to hear. Why do you say that? Well, if Jesus can forgive Peter for all he did, then I'm pretty sure Jesus can forgive me for what I did by kind of lying and not going on Andy's camping trip. I think you're right, Carl, and I think Andy will understand if you explain what happened. Jesus shared with Peter that he loved him and had big plans for him despite his mistakes. <laughs> wow, not only does he offer love and forgiveness, but Jesus gives encouragement. Carl, that's our big idea. Yeah. <laughs> Today's big idea is Jesus gives encouragement. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus gives, gives encouragement. encouragement. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go, everyone. Woo. So are you going to be OK, Carl? Yeah, I think so. Carl, I thought you said you hated camping. Andy, <laughs> I don't, but I really kind of just wanted to stay home last week. So you lied to me? Yes. It's OK, I forgive you. I'm sorry, Andy. Don't, I'm sorry. 
Don't cry. I'm gonna cry if you cry. If you cry, then I'm gonna start crying. I'm already crying. I don't know. I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. Guys, let's, let's, let's try to keep it together. Andy! I'm so glad we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids. Oh. I'll see you next week. I'm terrible. Right. I'm not a friend. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of Road Hey! So, I know you're going to say, tell me more about that hiking trip. <laughs> I definitely will. While the singing and tent building was fun and interesting, there was one day that I really didn't feel so awesome. Well, let me tell you what happened. So, we hiked to a spot where we could do some fishing. I keep forgetting there aren't any ovens or microwaves in nature. My dad took my brother and me fishing and it was more difficult than it looked. I've watched plenty of videos on the internet, but it's not as easy as it looks. So, my brother caught a fish. We were there for an hour trying to catch food to cook and to eat. And I caught nothing. I was so disappointed. I even started to cry because everyone caught a fish except me. But my dad made me feel loads better. He came over and told me that we could all share the catch and that I'd eventually catch one too. It reminded him of a great story you can find in the Bible. Want to hear it? Yeah, me too! It's time for our Bible story. Today we learn a story about Jesus and one of his disciples, Peter. In this story, the disciples are out fishing without Jesus. They sat and they sat and they sat, but they caught no fish. They kept sitting and waiting, but still nothing. Peter became so disappointed. Then someone called out to them and told them to try putting their nets on the right side of the boat. They did just that and then fish filled their nets. When they saw this, Peter and all the disciples knew that the person who called out to them was Jesus. Peter was so excited, he swam to where Jesus was standing on the shore. Jesus had started a fire and was preparing breakfast for the disciples. Jesus even told them to bring some of the fish they had just caught. After they had finished eating, Jesus turned to Peter and asked them a question Peter didn't expect. Jesus asked Peter if he loved Jesus more than anything. Jesus asked him this same question three times, and Peter told him yes every time. Then Jesus told him, since he loved Jesus, to take care of everyone who follows him. Even when Peter made a mistake, Jesus didn't turn him away. He welcomed him and encouraged him. He cheered him up, gave him hope, and let him know he still loved Peter very much. Jesus let Peter know that he could still do big things for God, no matter what he had done in the past. The disciples knew Jesus, but the world didn't know him the way the disciples did. So Jesus told Peter to go and tell people about Jesus, to encourage them like Jesus encouraged him, and to love them by sharing the wonderful news of Jesus. I realized I'm not great at fishing yet. My dad then told me, Sometimes we try to do things that they don't work out the way we want them to. We might even give up, which is what I did. But sometimes all we need is some extra help and encouragement. Look, Allie is calling me. Hey, Allie, how are you? A lot better. And I have some great news. Someone found Jeffy. That's great. Is he home with you now? Yes, right here. Thanks, Callie, for being my friend and encouraging me. Oh, Allie, I'm so happy to hear. Me too. Talk later? Absolutely. That was the best news, right? Allie thanked me for my encouragement. My dad encouraged me. I'm so happy Jesus understands our struggles and that Jesus gives encouragement. So let me continue telling you what happened. So my dad took me out alone after I calmed down a little <laughs> and showed me again how to fish. It took some time, but thanks to my dad's advice, I didn't give up this time. 
and I caught a fish. Gotta run now, though. It's time for lunch. Peace out, friends. Thanks for tuning in, 